Hey, well, welcome back to another Baseball Ops podcast with Top Velocity. Today, we're going to cover a subject I've covered many times before. It can be controversial. It's really the subject on long toss. The reason I like to cover this subject is it's kind of like a, it, it's a staple in the game and the development of throwing athletes, specifically in baseball. And the question I want to ask is, should it still be there today? You know, we've seen we've seen old standards of training like running poles start to be kind of phased out as the science has started to trickle down and showing evidence that uh, long distance running for explosive power athletes actually can be contraindicative. It actually can uh, cause or, or deteriorate the athlete in that skill. For example, it uh, reduces fast switch muscle fibers. It, um, it even has the effect of reducing testosterone. It, um, it, it can kill elasticity. So it really is kind of, you know, that's, it's, it's like looking at the, the long distance runner and the sprinter. Their bodies look completely different. And that sprinter is obviously going to be someone that is going to be a little bit more explosive, a lot more explosive. And that's what we see typically on a baseball field. So it, that, you know, so for example, is, is long tossing going to kind of go down that road? Because we don't have as much evidence on long tossing, but there is some evidence out there that shows that there could be contraindication in long tossing for throwing athletes, because it's kind of the same thing, right? It's like with the, uh, the, you know, long distance running, you know, and then your long distance throwing long distance running is going to change the anatomy, uh, the demands for the skill for long distance running. The, the anatomy is going to be different than the demands for short distance, explosive, quick running. The anatomy is going to change to that because it's like building a different engine going either way. So is long tossing going to have the same effect? Like eventually as we start to learn and understand it, we get more evidence behind it is the long distance throwing athlete. Is it a different, the anatomy changing differently for the demands of that as for a short distance throwing athlete? I know in baseball, we do have outfielders, um, but ideally uh, there's a high demand for velocity in the sport. So a lot of times, you know, like example with the sprinting, it's like when we start to run long distance, we start to slow down, change our mechanics. When we go into the long distance, isn't that's a, we're going to find. And when we're going to look at the evidence today that when we do that with long tossing, we see that we see the mechanics start to change the trajectory of the ball and even evidence that the ball velocity in a way slightly comes down when we start to go to long distance. The point is there's some big similarities between uh, the issues with long distance running for baseball players or explosive athletes and the issues with long distance throwing for short distance, you know, high velocity throwing athletes. But the question is, and, and I would love to hear your comments on that, post your comments on it. Do you believe that all, you know, eventually the long distance throwing the old routines or the old standards of long distance throwing for, for baseball athletes, do you think that's going to go away as we get more evidence behind it, kind of similar to uh, the running issues? So long toss. And, you know, a lot of times when I throw long toss out there, people are like, uh, well, does that just mean anything past 60 feet? What is long toss? I, I, I think of long toss, yeah, anything outside of the skill. So if you're a pitcher and you're throwing 60 feet, six inches, anything past that, you know, obviously something not one inch past that, but maybe a good 10 feet and, and farther, that becomes starts to become long toss. And then here's the thing. A lot of times, too, when I'm talking the problems with long toss, I'm actually talking more extreme measures of it because that's where it's more obvious what is going on. And there's a great study, it was done a while ago. It was done in, um, I'm not sure the date, but it, it definitely was probably 2015, 2017, somewhere around there by ASMI, American Sports Medicine Institute, Dr. Glenn Fleissig, Dr. James Andrews behind this. These are all uh, legendary doctors in baseball. They put out this study on Long toss. And I'm just going to read right from the study. If you want to look it up, it's called Biomechanical Comparison of Baseball Pitching and Long Toss, Implications of Training and Rehabilitation. The conclusion says that hard, horizontal, flat ground throws have biomechanical patterns similar to those of pitching and are therefore reasonable exercises for pitchers. So right up front in the conclusion, they're going, they're, these patterns are similar. But then they go, however, maximum distance throws. So 
I mean, let, let's let's be very specific when we read this. So hard horizontal flat ground throws have biomechanical patterns similar to those of pitching and are therefore reasonable for pitchers. So in that statement alone, they're not even saying distance. So I'm, I, I'm, I'm, you know, at this point, we're really not into the distance problems. It's really probably more in the flat ground, which in this study they did. They, they look, wanted to look at flat ground throwing also as compared to long toss throwing. And uh, however, they said, however, maximum distance throws produced increased torques and changes in kinematics. Caution is therefore advised in the use of these throws for rehabilitation and training. So they're right up front defining distance and saying maximum distance. It produced increased torques and changes in kinematics. So what does that mean? So it's saying, obviously, at that max distance. And what's the max distance? Obviously, the farthest you can throw. And we're going to look at the study because there were specific distance here. But they're basically saying that max distance at basically your farthest distance, you're going to experience torques, increased torques, and changes in your mechanics. When it says kinematics, it means mechanics. Those increased torques, though, what does that mean? That means stress in the arm. Torques are the rotational forces, stress in the arm. So, and it's when it says increased torques, it's pairing it up to the torques you experience when you're pitching. So it's it's telling us right here that if you're gonna go max distance, you're gonna get torques probably above the torques you would experience on the mound, and your mechanics are gonna change. So it says, therefore, caution is therefore advised in the use of these throws for rehabilitation and training. So it is this organization, which is is an advisor to Major League Baseball, you know, all pretty much all levels of the game are saying caution in using these throws for rehabilitation and training. So why would they tell you caution? Well, usually when you think caution, there's got to be some type of injury factor here, or it could be changes your mechanics. So maybe there's a performance factor here. So there's some concerns, obviously, at this point, when you look at this study. And it's important. Let's look at the distance they, they looked at. They obviously looked at 60 feet on the mound. They looked at and this is in meters. They looked at 130 or 37 meters, 55 meters, up to 80 uh, plus or minus nine meters. So that's well over 100 and I think 50 feet. I didn't do my conversions, but it's well over 150 feet. And the, the changes really didn't happen significantly, dramatically until they went to that max distance. That was the max distance at 80. And if you look at the what happened is the, the torques the specifically the elbow varus torque. What's the elbow varus torque? That's the that's the torques that hit your arm in the deceleration phase, and the shoulder internal rotation torque. So the torques pulling your arm back, those far exceeded the mound. So for example, they they tested, and these were college athletes, uh, college pitchers. They tested these college pitchers and. On the mound, the elbow varus torque was about 92 newtons, about 94 newtons in the shoulder interpretation torque. And then at max distance, it went all the way up to 100. So that was a huge increase. And when you, they first went to the 37 meters, it actually went down. But then when they went to the 55 meters, it went up a little bit higher. But then it dramatically exploded at the max distance. So I think that the lesson here is max distance is putting an aggressive amount of torques in your arm well above what you experience in the mound. So that is very concerning when you hear that, specifically because we have a sport with a pattern of injury, meaning we have a lot of elbow and shoulder injuries in this sport, in this skill. So more than likely, I'm going to tell you right now, it, I would not advise against long toss, extreme long toss specifically because of this study, what we're looking at in this study. Also, too, we have a, another a statistical analysis of information coming from, and this is an, a company that uh, used the sleeve. And with that sleeve, they looked at the torques that the sleeve were measuring at these distances. And so it's basically, this is looking at elbow varus torques or valgus torques. That's the, when the arm, elbow is pulling back. Varus is when it's decelerating forward by throwing distance in competitive competition. So it's important to understand the varus torque. Why is that? Because the varus torque is what pulls the electron away from the tip of the humerus, which that means it pulls the 
the funny bone, if you want to look at it that way, it can starts to pull it away. And that's where the UCL is. And that's what leads to Tommy John surgery. So high amounts of valgus stress throwing or pitching is what can cause the ligament, the UCL to, to tear and you'd have Tommy John surgery. And you look at this data and it shows that they start to move into the red zone, which the red zone here is extreme amount of torque, basically your, your highest amount of torques your elbows can handle with all pitchers, because they're looking at Little League, high school, college, and professional. And at 130 feet, they're, all pitchers on average are at maximum torques they can possibly handle on their arm. Now, but if you look at it per level, you look at the Little League, most of that is coming from the Little League throwers, pitchers. So the Little League is the one at 120 or 130, 130, 140, they're literally pushing the lines of what their elbow can handle. So their arm is about to literally rip open at 130, 140 feet on average, Little League. Should we be putting our, our throwing athletes, specifically our, our Little Leaguers, to those distances? No, not at all. Specifically, if you're going to pitch that kid two times this week, and that'd be ridiculous, right? So it's basically showing a little leaguer should be somewhere down in the 90 feet, you know, or ideally don't go past 60, try to stay within 60. And I think, you know, we're going to keep looking here. Let's real quick, you're going to see high school, it pushes up to 180, they get max torques. College, it pushes up to 220, it starts to happen. Professional, it, it, pushes up to uh, pretty much the same. There, there, But there is some going past that and, and higher. So what, what it's saying is there are going to be some that can go farther than that before they hit max torsion, and some that probably more than likely go less than that. But should we even be walking those lines? That's the question. And I definitely am, am against that because, we're like I said, we're already in a skill where we're already putting max amount of uh, work on the arm to where we're having high amounts of injury and, and pain so going into training that's going to exaggerate or add to that, I think, is, is not a, it's not advisable. It it's, would be uh, very concerning. The other key thing, if we look at back to the ASMI study, that's really, really significant. Because, you know, it talked about, it saw a change in mechanics when, when guys were at maximum distances. And it pretty much said here that at, at arm cocking, so well, let, let's read the whole thing. This is in the results. At foot contact, when your front foot lands, the participant's shoulder line was nearly horizontal when pitching from a mound and became progressively more inclined as the throwing distances increased. So at foot plant, the shoulder line was horizontal. But the more they started to throw at max distance, they started tilting back. Okay. At arm cocking, when the arm was cocked, that's usually at the same time, the greatest amount of shoulder extermination elbow flexion, shoulder internal rotation torque, and elbow varus torque were measured during the maximum distance throws. So it's saying in arm cocking, the greatest amount of those measurements happened at the max distances. So when they looked at the biomechanical, the mechanical measurements, they hit the maximum of those mechanics at the maximum distance. And it said elbow extension velocity, right? Extension velocity was also greatest for the maximum distance throws. And then it said forward trunk tilt at the instant a ball release decreased as throwing distances increased. So if you look at these studies and read in more into the study, there's way more in the manuscript of the study. It's showing that the, the changes are what's happening. The stride starts shortening, the arm starts getting more aggressive, and the trunk start stops moving forward. And if the trunk's going to stop moving forward and throwing, it's just going to rotate. So what's happening is you're striding shorter, your trunk's not moving forward, and now you're rotating and you're pushing and extending your arm harder. So, and at the same time too, your torques are going up. So here's the thing, is what's causing the torques to go up your intensity? Or is what causing the torques to go up your changes in mechanics due to the, the release point differences to get to the max distances, you know, the trajectory. So if we go down and we look at, um, we look at velocity, we can see the velocity and they're doing this in meters per second. So the velocity was 37 meters per second on average until the max distance and it went down to 36 meters per second. So think about it. It's saying that max distance, you're putting the most stress in your arm. And I'm saying, is that because of your intent or because the to get the trajectory 
basically to actually start to loft to max distances, you have to change your mechanics, which more than likely that's the answer because the velocity is coming down. So why would, if you're increasing your intent to get to causing those max stress, why would the velocity go down? So it, to me, that's a good indication that the mechanics are being forced to change because the je trajectory, not the intent, and it's why your velo is coming down. So think about that. If the max distance, your velo is coming down, you're getting more rotational and your torques are going up. So at also the same time too, I remember when I first read this study, you can almost correlate the fact that becoming more rotational is going to exaggerate the torques on your arm at the same velocity. So even if you maintain velocity, but you get more rotational, your torques go through the roof. And you see that in tons of studies, you see that more contralateral, meaning more leaning on glove side, way more torques on your arm. So all the things that take us more rotational makes us put more stress on our arm. And the point is, is long toss, max distance long toss is doing that. It's developing more rotational mechanics, which are putting way more stress on your arm. And it's not even affecting your velocity. So why would these be good throws? Like I said, once again, we're kind of going back to how we started. Is this going to be the next long distance running, uh, you know, exposure of poor training? Like, is this going to be the next contraindicated exercise? Meaning contradictory exercise to what we're trying to develop in the skill. And I believe it is. We're eventually going to realize extreme long toss was not smart. Maybe in too much long toss in general is not smart because it's developing bad mechanics that's causing the stress to go up in your arm and you're not seeing the changes in velocity. So yes, when coaches are like, go out and long toss for strength, strengthen your arm. Is it strengthening your arm? Well, evidence would show velocity wise, if that's what you're correlating strength to, it's not happening. We're not looking at this over time to see what it's, how it's deteriorating the arm. We need those studies. But at the end of the day, we're finding that yeah, throwing in general can have a strength effect. It also has a wear and tear effect that eventually injures you. So you're probably, when you throw, if it's at 60 feet to 100 feet to 300 feet, it, to the arm, it's just throwing, which your body's adapting to the throwing and can experience an increase in velocity. So when someone says to me that they threw long toss to throw harder, I don't see that being, I see that very anecdotal, meaning like that's just a personal experience and it's a poor correlation to throwing harder. Because a lot of people are throwing long toss and not throwing harder, right? They're probably just throwing harder because in the act of throwing, they changed some things. Their mechanics got better. Or, you know, they're, uh, they were work, working out at the same time and that had the effect. They just don't truly know the, under, the, the correlation and the connection. So, like I said, I believe long toss, extreme long toss is going to be phased out of this game if we keep learning from the science and we need more of the science. So we definitely, all the scientists out there, we need more long toss, extreme long toss studies. And you do need to know, you need to avoid these throws because like the study says, it's forcing you to get more rotational in your mechanics, which is going to hurt you on the mound. And it's also putting, because of that excessive stress on your arm, which is going to hurt you on the mound. So when you look at this, the really, there's way more negatives than benefits so I highly advise against it. I appreciate you guys listening. If you have any comments, I know you're going to have a lot of comments. I'd love to hear your comments on that. Go out and read these studies. The one biomechanical comparison of baseball pitching and long toss implications for training and rehabilitation. And let me know your thoughts on it. And, and, and if there's any other evidence you'd like me to read on it, I'd love to read it. Appreciate you guys listening. And we'll see you on the next episode. <laughs>